make sure you're physical. A lot riding on the ball game. You heard that bell ring? Arkansas football brought to you by Sonic. Down the field, held in the fine. That leads a four. Right to 20. 
Arkansas football brought to you by First Security Bank. Every down stands on its own. In a game like this, usually three or four get downs are going to set the momentum of the game. Pay the price, fellas. We've been in this for four months now. We started out there in an old 108 degree temp. Right now, you got to lay it all out there for 48 minutes. Everything you've got. Lock up on your tackles. Stay hooked on your blocks. Backs run hard. Protect your football. Any questions? Boonville and Coach Ken Rippey were making their third straight semifinal appearance last night in McGee. And when you played in three state championship games, you deserve a big banner. And the McGee Owls were ready for another big trip to the big town for the big show. But Boonville stood in the way, and the fireworks belonged to the Bearcats last night, with Boonville's defense and special teams setting the tone early. With McGee's second possession, the Bearcats force a punt, and Aubrey Borsma busts through the line of scrimmage for the block. Chance Farley scoops it up, and he has a convoy all the way for a 30-yard touchdown and a 7-0 lead for Boonville. On McGee's next possession, quarterback John Powell's pass is tipped at the line by Russell Andrews, and sophomore linebacker Kyle Arnold grabs it and rumbles down the sideline deep into McGee territory. Six plays later, another sophomore, Boonville quarterback Brad West. He hands it off to do everything man last knuckles. This guy plays nose guard when he's not running for touchdowns, and that made it 13 to nothing Boonville. Now, in the second quarter, Boonville has it back and the Bearcats are on the move again when McGee's Jamar Streeter smothers fullback Brian Taylor and the ball comes loose. John Powell pounces on it for McGee. On offense, John is McGee's quarterback and he is taking over. First, this 13-yard scramble around the left end before Ronnie Becker finally brings him down for Boonville. On the next play, Powell fakes to Dexter Love, then shows a little love with the toss to Dexter, who races 43 yards, and that cut Boonville's lead to 13-7. On the Owls' next possession, Powell caps a seven-play, 70-yard drive with this 24-yard keeper around the right end, and guess what? It was tied 13-13 at halftime. But the second half belonged to Boonville as the Bearcats scored 22 unanswered points. Just 44 seconds into the third quarter, and Knuckles puts the Bearcats ahead for good with this 45-yard run. Les would finish with 134 yards and four touchdowns on just 19 carries. The two-point conversion is West throwing high to Trey Holloway, and it's 21 to 13. Holloway had more. On the Owls' best and last scoring threat of the night, he snags Powell's pass in the end zone. A little bit later, Holloway recovered a fumble, and that would set up this Knuckles one-yard TD plunge. Boonville for six turnovers on the night and forged its way to Little Rock. After too many years of playoff semifinal frustration, the Bearcats will play for it all next Saturday at noon. Final score, Boonville 35. The two-time defending state champ McGee Owls, 13. I'm so proud of these kids. We started the year, everybody picked the second, and uh, they, they, they jailed about the seventh or eighth game, and they're playing, playing extremely well together and playing with a lot of attention and fire. Looking all in my eyes, guys, and see everybody's ready to play football. This is what you've worked for since January right here to play in a ball game like this right here. We talked about it all week long. Most important ball game you played in all year long, regardless of whether we play next week or not. Most important one is right here tonight. You prepared for it. You worked for it. Now all we have to do now is go out and execute.
play together. <coughs> As a team, we can do it. As a team, we can do it. As a team. Grab somebody. Nashville coach Billy Laird is one of the finer fellas in Arkansas high school football, and last night his Scrappers played host to old 7 AAA conference rival Fordyce on the hill with a trip to the rock on the line. First drive of the game, Nashville quarterback Brian Pope, he started as a sophomore and has really come on strong the second half of this junior season. Nice toss to Matthew Ponder, and watch the spin move. Fordyce's Harry Benson is still pondering how he grabbed nothing but air. Finally, Wesley Hunt and Philip Proctor bring down Ponder. Then, Pope fakes the pitch and hands it to Willie Hobson, who gets a great block from Jumbo, Julian Burchett. Fordyce's Terrence Chavis made the tackle, but it was another national first down just before its first score. Pope, all kinds of time in the pocket, great protection, and the pretty pass to tight end Corey Smith. It's a 31-yard TD and the Scrappers score on their first series. It's seven to nothing. Still in the first quarter, Pope again, pulling the trigger for Ponder again. Matthews got it for a 39 yard touchdown and Nashville leads early 14 to zip. Nashville's defense shut out high octane Ozark last week. Last night it frustrated Fordyce. Redbug quarterback Cody Culp buried by Anthony Jones. The ball is loose and Charles Green recovers for the Scrappers. That sets up Nashville's next score. Hobson on the sweep. Great blocking again. Hobson had 206 yards last night, and he scores on the 21-yard run. It's 21 to nothing in the first quarter. But the Bugs battled back. Culp to Terrence Chavis, and Terrence gets by Nashville's Chris Benson in the flat for some extra yardage before he gets pushed out of bounds. That sets up the great run by Kentrell Rogers, breaking tackles at the line of scrimmage and sidestepping defenders for a red bug touchdown. Kentrell had 167 yards on the night, but Nashville led 42 to 14 at halftime, and the Scrappers have not lost at home in their past 44 appearances on the hill. But one note on that, next year they will play host to Class 4A finalist Hope in the season opener. Next week though, the Scrappers will play for their fifth state championship since Coach Laird took over the program nine years ago. Phenomenal. Final score, the number one ranked National Scrappers 42, the Fordyce Red Bugs 28. So congrats, Doctor, or soon-to-be Dr. John. Now it's time for Arkla's Scholar Athlete of the Week. Little Rock Catholic's John Gorey loved to play football, but now that his gridiron days are behind him, he's ready to tackle a pre-med program after scoring a 31 on the ACT. In fact, John says he first thought about being a doctor when he was eight years old. That has really helped him focus in the classroom from elementary school on. I've always wanted to be a doctor. I've always enjoyed science and things like that. And I'd love to tie that in with sports. It's something I've always wanted to do. So congrats, doctor or soon to be Dr. John Gorey, our ARCLA Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football, highlights from today's Class 5A State Championship. Ball, brought to you by Lander. <clears throat> Here we are. Live your dream. Gosh, can you get, have a better dream than this as a high school football as a kid growing up? Huh? Well, sir, so, let's sir, think sir. about that. You can't have a better dream as an athlete than to play for a state championship. One time. It's one game.
Thank you. 